here, my buddy, he's uh, leaving me. Do you remember the gay Arab anarchist? Uh, yes. Well, even if you're just pretending to remember him, he remembers you. Or maybe he doesn't. But in any case, he's doing something for you. He's biking across America for liberty. Oh, wow. If he's doing that for you, surely you can do something for him. Visit his website, bikealltheway.com. He'll be uploading a lot of videos from New Hampshire to Florida and Florida to California or something like that. Bikealltheway.com. we got a big day tomorrow. The boys will help me keep Rolf company. We'll be back after first thing in the morning. What would you do if you were cracked down on by the government in a manner that puts you completely at the end of your rope? In a manner that gave you nothing to lose? Let's say you're in jail and don't really have access to much of anything beyond the basics for survival. One option that has been tried historically and sometimes been successful is the hunger strike. Some of the suffragettes used it successfully, I believe in the early part of the 1900s. Of course they were using it against the government. Uh, Gandhi used it, uh, I don't think he ever used it against the government, but used it as a method of protesting uh, the tactics of his, his allies when his allies went viral, violent. The IRA gunman Mike, uh, I'm sorry, the IRA gunman Bobby Sands, and I think roughly nine of his uh, associates uh, hunger struck all the way to death in uh, protest of the British policy in Northern Ireland. They got uh, good publicity even before they uh, started getting hungry. I mean, the publicity was instant as soon as the strike was announced, almost. But that is the exception, not the rule. My experience seeing uh, people hunger strike in the modern freedom movement in America is that it's almost always been ineffective. That's because very few of them have taken it near the point of death. The only one I can think of who did is Reverend Paul Revere out in Oregon, who took it to the three-week mark and uh, apparently looked like a concentration camp inmate by the time he was uh, let out. Revere, by the way, says you shouldn't ever start a hunger strike unless your plan is to take it to the point of death. And you don't ever do it for the point of trying to get out of jail. I would take Reverend Revere's thinking maybe even a step further. I'm not convinced that it's even wise to start a hunger strike. So if you think about his hunger strike, yes, he did get some publicity, but I never heard about it until many years later. And of course, all the other ones I've ever heard of didn't get any publicity. Uh, stateside in recent years. Here are the problems I see with the hunger strike approach. First of all, when you say you're going to do one, no one believes you'll take it to the point of death. Hunger strikes take a long time uh, to develop into anything, and they're nothing new. Hunger strikes also kill very slowly. I'm guessing this may take some of the drama out of the whole thing. One alternative I have uh, brushed on and uh, very tentatively considered for my own eventual use is the thirst strike. Most Americans have never experienced powerful thirst and probably have no idea how excruciating that pain would be. However, if you need to commandeer news coverage you have to do something new. And on the face of it, at least, it seems like there might be certain other advantages to this desperate approach. First of all, authorities don't have any experience dealing with it. They know how to deal with hunger strikes. They'll put a tube down your nose or down your throat. 
and force feed you in some other manner. This was what destroyed Ed Brown supporter Danny Riley's hunger strike. He knew he would not be able to take it to the point of death because they would always force feed him. But it takes a lot less to force feed nutrition into someone than it does to force feed all the water they need. One of the disadvantages that folks have pointed out to the uh, thirst strike approach would be that it does only take about five or six days to get to the point of death if you're not active and the temperature is low. It's been observed that uh, five or six days is not really enough time to organize political support of a large nature. One way around this issue would be to announce the water strike or the thirst strike in advance, perhaps two or three weeks in advance, making the whole process still um, last just as long as a hunger strike would. I want to make clear I'm not advocating this as a technique for anyone else to use. It's just that I've given thoughts to uh, using it myself in certain circumstances. Of course, I'm talking about extremely desperate circumstances. I'm referring to this as a method of last resort. Why are you... Go to the door, front door! But as the wheels come off uh, in America, things that we once thought unthinkable will become increasingly thinkable. Cruelties we would never expect governments to inflict upon the American people will probably be inflicted. Twenty years ago, would you have believed me if I had told you police would be shooting people execution style in subway stations in front of the public? Would you have believed me if I told you Americans would be committing the same war crimes that they executed Japanese for. All those things have come to pass, and more bad things will come to pass before it gets better. What are your thoughts on this concept? Lay them out in the comments section.